Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with the Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Friday. Happy weekend. I hope you guys have some an amazing weekend plans. I need to read. That is my weekend plan. I have not done much reading this week, which is upsetting. And um, it is the most stunning day in Northern California today. And I think it's supposed to go into the weekend as well. So I'm super excited for that. And I definitely want to get some reading done so that I can uh, have some stuff to talk about. I have done zero reading. I think I did some reading at the beginning of the week, but yeah, I am on hiatus for some known reason. Um, I am here today to do a recommendation video for a readathon that is going to go on during the month of April. Jacqueline over at Six Minutes to Me and Doris at Aldi Books are hosting what they're calling the Hashtag Aussie April Readathon. It's really a readathon to encourage you to read books by Australian authors, which I think is important. Australia produces a lot of amazing literature, and I don't know that we focus, en focus enough on it. And Jacqueline, to be honest with you, is my go-to for Australian literature recommendations, as you will see in this video. Um, the readathon has a two prompts and two bonus prompts, and really, again, Again, it's to celebrate Australian writers and also to celebrate Jacqueline's one-year booktube anniversary. Congratulations, Jacqueline. So I'm going to link both of their announcement videos down below for you so that you can go ahead and take a look at their videos regarding this readathon. And I am going to give you some suggestions for your readathon. Now, as I always say, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, because all these books are going to wind up on your TBR regardless if you participate in this readathon. So, the first prompt is an Aussie release that you've review, seen reviewed on Booktube. So a new release that you've seen reviewed on Booktube. So I'm gonna give you two recommendations. One, I saw on Booktube. Well, first I saw it on Jacqueline's Instagram, and then I saw it on her channel, and that is Laura Elizabeth Woolett's Beautiful Revolutionary. This came out this year here in the U.S. from Scrib, and I don't, or Scribe, I'm sorry, Scrib <laughs> in my head, um, Scribe Publishing, and I bought this actually at East Bay Booksellers in Oakland, one of my favorite absolute bookstores in Northern California. Um, so it is definitely available. Beautiful Revolutionary, the author, um, Laura, is from Perth, Australia, and she, um, writes a novel about a young woman who is really at odds with herself. She is a minister's daughter, but she is herself an atheist. She's a married woman, but she is also just on the verge of trying to figure out who and what type of life she wants to live. Her and her husband wind up moving all the way to California to a city called Evergreen Valley or Eden of Evergreen Valley, I'm sorry, it's rural, and it's really to support the fact that her husband is a conscientious objector. This It's 1968, so um, you know where we're at. Um, and um, they meet and get involved in the church of Reverend Jim Jones. And as you can imagine, this becomes a novel of a religious cult and their involvement in it. Now, Jacqueline raved about this book and said that I had to read it and that I would really like it, and I am super excited for it. So I hope that definitely entices you guys to read Beautiful Revolutionary by Laura Elizabeth Woolett. There you go. The next book I actually buddy read with Jacqueline, and that is the novel No More Boats by Felicity Lasagna. Okay, so the author told me that her last name is like Lasagna. Castagna. So Felicity Castagna. <laughs> um, I love when people help me because you know how bad I am with names. So that's very helpful. So thank you so much, Felicity. I am going to tell you about this book, but not review it um, because I will do that in a red review. But I absolutely thought it was fascinating. This is the story of a man named Antonio and his family and an event that occurred in Australian history called the Tampa Affair. And so basically we have two things. Antonio is a um, construction worker by trade. He has had a tragedy. Some, an accident happens at work and his best friend is killed and he is injured so bad that he must retire and is basically at home. 
This is the story of his family, his wife, and his two children. Both of his children are, he is an Italian immigrant to Australia in a different, um, many years ago. His children are both born in Australia, and they both have their own sort of sub-stories. I'm not going to go there. But the Tampa, Tampa Affair is an event that occurred in Australian history um, when a boat full of refugees was off the coast of Australia, and uh, the Australian government would not let it land on the continent. So that is that. There was, it has a whole political background. It talks about the refugees and immigrant experiences in Australia, and it has a lot of really poignant moments about this idea. Um, Antonio is a very complicated man, and his family is very complicated, and it's definitely a book that is going to make you think. So Jacqueline and I have talked about it a number of times, and we continue to have stuff that we can talk about. So there you go. So that is No More Boats by Felicity Castagna lasagna, castagna. Um, and I want to thank Europa Editions very, very much for sending me this copy. I really enjoyed this book, and I definitely have a lot to say about it in my read and review. The next prompt on in the um, readathon is a an Aussie author that you've been meaning to get to. So the one I'm going to tell you about is a book I heard about ages ago on the podcast The Readers, and that is Elizabeth Harrow's The Watchtower. Now, this is set in the 1940s. This is this tale of two sisters whose mother abandons them, and they are really sort of then engulfed in the life of a man named Felix, who actually offers to marry one of the daughters, or one of the girls, actually. And what it says on the back is, little by little, the two sisters grow complicit in his obsessions, his cruelty, and his need to control. Set in the leafy northern suburbs of Sydney during the 1940s, The Watchtower is a novel of relentless and acute psychological power. Thomas of the Readers, or um, pre previously of the Readers, he is no longer with the Readers, um, highly recommended this book, and I bought it immediately, and I don't know why I haven't read it. So that is my Aussie author that I've been meaning to read. The one I'm going to recommend to you guys, just in case you missed this book when it came out, or any of her books, you may have more access than I, that is Foreign Soil by Maxine Beniba Clark. Now, this is a short story collection that is worth every page of your time. Now, Maxima Beniba Clark also has written a memoir called The Hate Race. I don't own it, but I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about it, so that may be something more up your alley. The Foreign Soil is really a short story collection that focuses on really the human experience. I'm just going to tell you about the first story called Danny. It's been a while since I read it. David. David. This is a story of a young woman who run, uh, is riding her bike that she has just got, and she runs into a woman who asks if she can ride it. And as she's riding the bike, it gives her sort of this utmost joy. And we find out through sort of flashbacks why the bicycle and the idea of riding a bike are so important to her. The first story will freaking break your heart. Maxine Beniba Clark is an amazing writer, amazing. And I love her on Twitter. I follow her. She has a children's book out that I really want to try to get my hands on for my nieces and nephews. So she's very eclectic. I know she is also a poet by trade. I just, uh, yeah, fanboy, 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 Foreign Soil by Maxine Beniba Clark. The next book or next prompt on the readathon is to read a book by an indigenous author. And this is actually one I have not read, but one I want to read, and that is The Swan Book by Alexis Wright. Now, this book, um, Alexis Wright won an award, and I can't remember exactly. Oh, she, this is the winner of the Miles Franklin Literary Award. This book is a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to read the back to you guys just because I don't want to get it wrong. But Oblivia is hiding from her abusers in the depths of a gum tree when she is rescued by an old woman who herself is a refugee from the devastation of the climate change wars. Her savior, Bella Donna of the Champions, takes Oblivia to live with her on an old warship in a polluted dry swamp, fenced off from the rest of Australia by the army. The dry swamp becomes the setting for a revolutionary invasion that brings with it the promise of salvation. But for Oblivia, it seems likely to be yet another trap from which she must escape. 
I've heard nothing but great things about this book. I bought it the minute I saw it and heard about it, and I don't know why I haven't read it. But Phil's bonus prompt number one for the hashtag Aussie April Readathon, and that is The Swan Book by Alexis Wright. Last but not least, and the last prompt is to read a book that has um, been nominated and or won the Stella Prize. Now, the Stella Prize is the Australian version of the Booker, the Pulitzer, and um, there are a lot of really great books on the lists. But the one I've read and the one I would recommend is The Natural Way of Things by Charlotte Wood, another Europa edition, and I think this cover is fantastic. This is a sort of like a, it's not a futuristic, but it's sort of a, it's, how am I going to explain it? This is a story of a group of women that one day wind up waking up in what turns out to be sort of like a concentration camp for these women. They've been drugged and taken to this location, put in jail cells, and where they are going to be worked basically for manual labor. You find out as you read the book what connects all of these women, and, it, and, and, and I'm not going to give it away because I want sort of the pages to do that for you, but they have sort of something that they have stood up for, and societal norms have caused them to be stigmatized for what they have stood up for. So someone, you don't know who at the beginning, has paid for them to sort of been removed from society and turned into this camp. What happens is they become accustomed to the camp, things happen, and they turn into sort of this little commune. It goes very, for lack of a better term, Hunger Games, but it also has a really vivid sense of reality. I could see the movie for this in my head as I read the book. It will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's definitely got an edge to it. It's got a heartbeat that's that, you know what I mean? It's definitely got that, but it also has a lot to say about how women are treated in society for different things, and then how they can become their own group, how they sort of create their own friendship, their own bonds, and some other stuff, which is just phenomenal. I really enjoyed The Natural Way of Things by Charlotte Wood. I highly recommend it. I know um, I know Mercedes didn't like it, um, but I do know Simon liked it. So I think that it has, and it's going to cause for a lot of um, different opinions, but I definitely think you will not be bored while you're reading it. So this feels bonus prompt number two, which is to read a book that is won or and is nominated for the Stella Prize. So that is this. This is a collection. This is a little collection of books for Hashtag Aussie April. So I want to thank both Jacqueline and Doris for running this readathon. Hopefully some of these books will wind up on your TBR and or you will participate in the readathon and um, give some comments on their videos or my video if you so watch. wish. So as always, as I always say, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so very, very much. If you are new to my channel, well, I hope that you like this video and you stay around for more. Until next time, I wish you happy reading and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!